Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? I want to respect everybody's time. And like I said, we do have, we have a little bit to get through here. So um, as I said, I'm Mike Cotterman. I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Bothell. And really appreciate everyone being here today and appreciate your participation in this virtual open house. As I'm sure you all know, Canyon Park is a growing vital local and regional economy. And we're planning for jobs and housing in this area, which has been a priority for the city council. So after about three years of visioning, testing concepts and analyzing alternatives, we finally have a draft plan. And we are looking to get some feedback from you uh, on that draft plan. Planning Commission is still reviewing and discussing this draft and they really wanna hear what you have to say about it, good, bad or indifferent. So we hope you'll take the opportunity today to share that with us, but also know that there are other opportunities uh, that you'll have to weigh in on the plan and provide your comments. So we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. So I introduce Rachel Miller with Makers Architecture to lead us into the substance of the open house. Rachel. Thank you, Mike. I'm Rachel Miller. I'm an urban designer and urban planner with Makers Architecture and Urban Design. And I'm pleased to be here with a full team of um, Burke and Farron Piers and Watershed and Pertit uh, working on the sub area plan for the city. And you'll get to talk with more of us during the breakout sessions later. So we're looking forward to meeting you then. Um, to get us through this, uh, we've got a few things we'd like to talk at you about for the first 20 minutes or so. And then we want to hear from you and dig in a little deeper on a few specific questions. Um, and then I think my kids are at the door. Can you hear the doorbell ringing? Um, and then reporting back, coming back together as a large group. And then um, why focus on Canyon Park? Why, why are we doing this sub area plan at all? There's, it's a really important regional growth center. Um, Puget Sound Regional Council has, uh, it's to maintain the um, designation as a regional growth center um, and meeting their criteria. Um, it has thousands of high tech and biomedical jobs and uh, regional transportation. A lot of things are meeting and passing through this area and serving the needs of the region. Um, and there's a lot of potential for growth. We've been seeing a lot of growth in jobs in particular over the last few years and we expect that to continue. And the idea that jobs and homes can coexist for a more multifaceted neighborhood. So what's the challenge? We really want to ensure that growth makes Canyon Park better. Uh, there are regional assets, uh, like I mentioned before, there's I-405, the Bothell Everett Highway, um, there's a park and ride in the area, and wetlands. And these are all really great resources, but when they come together and meet here, and the wetlands taking up a lot of space, um, and, and though they serve important functions, um, it makes a complicated and constrained area, um, particularly for transportation. And no matter what, whether um, what, no matter what level of growth we expect or plan for, um, it does get worse. Um, so, and, and to address the transportation issues, we do need substantial funds. Um, so as I mentioned before, the regional growth center criteria, maintaining that designation allows us to compete for regional transportation funding. And we need to show how we can address these challenges and how we can um, grow feasibly with that. There are also changing times. Um, people are looking for more amenities in these multifaceted neighborhoods and that idea of mixing of uses and shifting um, from single occupancy vehicles or regular cars to other modes like biking and walking and um, shuttles and first and last mile options. So the whole purpose of this sub area plan is to plan so that we can make things better than we otherwise would without a good solid plan in place. So we've done a lot of talking with people, um, Bothell staff in particular, over the last three years. Um, lots of stakeholders involved. And back in the 2018 uh, vision, um, the idea or big um, qualities of this area were to become an economic driver, which it already is, so enhancing that, a multifaceted neighborhood connected to the natural environment, and a transportation hub. I mentioned that we've talked with a lot of people. There are a zillion meetings we've had with community members um, about the 9th Ave community, um, 20th Ave, um, technical advisory groups, um, the life sciences, the planning commission. And so this is just a quick summary of some of the major points we've heard from all of those folks. Uh, in terms of the concept and land use and urban design, um, we've heard that focusing the growth near transit uh, is really important to people and recognizing that there is a shift towards transit. 
Um, this is Bothell's big chance to do that here. Mixing residences and jobs has been supported in most of the meetings we've been involved in. The green highlights means that um, it's coming from more, more outside groups than planning commission, um, often in addition to planning commission. The idea of putting residential near North Creek to make use of that as an amenity and including parks and open space uh, in, the, in the planning. Meeting PS, uh, Puget Sound Regional Council, Regional Growth Center criteria is important. Uh, and addressing the school capacity or at least understanding the issues there and how the buses are flowing and as I mentioned earlier considering parks. In terms of economic development lots of support for this being a life sciences cluster. Um, there are a lot of biomedical companies here uh, and they become even more important during the COVID pandemic and supporting small and people of color owned businesses. In terms of transportation what we've been hearing from people are First and foremost, improve the traffic situation, um, prioritize transit, and uh, alongside that, the walking and biking connections to and from transit and to jobs and residences. Uh, transportation demand management, which means figuring out other ways for people to commute. So whether they're carpooling or riding transit instead of a single occupancy vehicle or um, using little shuttles once they're in the area and things like that. Focusing on moving people and not cars is a big theme that keeps coming up again and again. Um, the, we did have some comments about the appropriateness of a regional growth center and making sure that we're doing an adequate analysis uh, and mitigating any impacts of the growth that's being planned for. Uh, we have gotten support generally for the 20th Ave Southeast extension, um, and we'll talk more about street extensions later. So if this is news, <laughs> don't worry, we'll talk about it. Uh, and concerns about a 214th Street Southeast extension. Um, again, we'll talk more about this later. There is support for a trail. Um, and generally, if 214th goes through, then uh, there are other um, pieces that need to come in first, other improvements. In terms of the natural environment, there's been a lot of support just in general for all of the natural systems out here. And like was stated in the vision, um, connecting to and enhancing and understanding that this is really a critical place in terms of wetlands and streams um, and all of the associated functions with that. Addressing stormwater and flooding is another issue. Making sure that um, I, I, when mitigating any impacts that they're done um, within Canyon Park as much as possible. Okay, so for the overall concept, there are two major transportation corridors, the I-405 corridor and the Bothell Everett Highway. So just for a little orientation, this north-south route is the Bothell Everett Highway, then we have I-405, 228th on the south end, and Maltby Road or SR-524 on the north end. And what we see as the big opportunities and what we've been hearing is that transit is a major regional investment and making use of that and building out neighborhoods um, that make use of that and act as really self-sufficient, multifunctional. Um, you can live, you can work, you can play, you can walk around on a trail, um, all of these things um, within walking distance or biking distance or rolling distance, however you get around with um, ideally without a car, or lessening the uh, need for car trips or shortening those trips. So the major areas where we see as opportunities are this 17th node north of I-405 um, and connecting from the transit station up 17th and eastwards across North Creek into the um, business park. And then the other major node is the Canyon Park Place node south of I-405. And again, connecting from the station down into the current shopping center and then to the neighborhoods, which are more extensive south of the sub area. Up north is Thrasher's Corner. And this one we see as evolving over time. Um, and mostly the investment is really around the transit station um, and park and ride down by I-405 because of the multi-directional transit um, and connect better, closer and better connections into the really job oriented area. These purple areas further out are serving an important function for the city right now with the life sciences cluster um, and other affordable commercial space and really interesting businesses out here. So maintaining them and maintaining the flexibility to keep those uses and let them grow as they best see fit is really important to this plan. 
So just imagining what those neighborhood centers might look like, um, something like this street where anybody can feel safe and comfortable walking to and from a station area to their job or to their home. Um, and then that connection to the transit station, it would be up on I-405, um, there's a, a WashDOT um, project to connect 17th up and provide express toll lane access. Um, and so making sure that um, if this park and ride could redevelop um, with better uses at the ground floor to help people feel really safe as they walk by and make the connection upwards um, up to this flyover station and then over a ped bridge and make it as safe and wonderful and comfortable as possible. And then the same thing on the south side, this is a very long-term wash stop plan. So nothing that's gonna happen in the future, uh, in, in the near future. And I should mention this whole plan is a 20 year plan. So um, everything that we're talking about is a slow evolution, nothing that's gonna happen today or tomorrow. Um, but again, with this redevelopment connecting to a new neighborhood center um, that slowly evolves over time, um, but connecting with a nice, wonderful, activated um, path that gets you up to the station area. So the land use uh, vision is um, hitting all the right marks. <laughs> we, um, it, it's got the mix of uses so that people are able to um, reach their jobs and their homes um, pretty easily with this set of land use mixes um, and with intensities closest to the stations. So where you see the dark pink, there's more intense uses close to the stations. And then as you get further out, less intense uses. Um, and this, this uh, mix and intensity has um, also met the regional growth center criteria for a certain level of density. So just to give a sense of what these buildings look like, again, um, or, or what intensity we're talking about, it's about six, six or seven stories um, in the more intense pink areas closest to the um, station. And then as you move further out in the more like half mile area, um, which uh, is important because the quarter mile area is about the five minute walk, which we're pretty sure people will walk for transit. And then for good transit, good um, frequent and high capacity transit, 10 minute walk is, is okay. Um, so in that middle pink area, again, around five stories or maybe four. Um, and then in the lighter pink areas, we get to lower intensities there. And then moving further out away from the transit areas, these are the areas we see as more um, residential in nature and they connect to the surrounding neighborhoods, um, south and then up here north um, outside of the sub area. So again, higher intensities closer to transit and then lower intensities like townhouses and mix of small apartments um, in the lighter orange areas. The employment areas again are trying to stay as flexible as they can to um, keep the types of businesses that are already using the well and uh, using the area and functioning well. So again, purple areas a little closer to transit are a little higher intensity and then when you move further away a little lower intensity. Um, some of these photos can be a little misleading because you can't see how much surface parking is connected with the building. So just keep that in mind when you look at the number of stories. The number of stories is less important um, than, than what's actually the, the amount of building on the lot. So a little overview on transportation. Um, there are no easy solutions. I think we opened this by saying that this is a challenging area and it really is. So we're doing as um, the plan is recommending as much as it can for improving roadway capacity. So by doing some intersection improvements um, and improving some roads as possible and as um, economically feasible. Um, making non-car options attractive is a theme that arose again and again. Um, so making that cultural shift and making that shift something that's actually possible and doable. Again, slowly over time. Extending three streets, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of these, um, and then you can get into more detail on these if you are in the transportation breakout group. The three stars identify um, the potential street extensions, 20th Ave near Fred, on the backside of Fred Meyer, 214th connecting Buffalo Everett Highway and 9th Ave, and then 219th connecting um, into the Phillips area parking lot. And then again, just prioritizing transit as much as is possible. 
Um, on that last slide, uh, there were a lot of pedestrian and bicycle connections as well, so those were an important aspect of the plan. So what's really interesting about the mix of uses is um, the, the comparison of the no action. So if you just take the plans that are on the books right now and carry that forward and um, do the comprehensive plan projects that are already on the books and have the regional growth that's already going to happen, um, as we mentioned earlier, it's not a good picture. <laughs> um, what these, the Buffalo Everett Highway is red and has a level of service F, which means that it's got slower traffic or stop and go traffic. Um, when you move up the scale, uh, the, the traffic flows are a little bit better. So with our 2043 preferred alternative, we do get to a level of service E. That includes pretty aggressive transportation demand management strategies. And so that means working with the um, business owners and um, employees out in the area to try to work with them and see how they can reduce commutes in and out of the area. Um, and then the capital improvement projects that are beyond the comprehensive plan, that means the projects that this plan came up with. So 20th Ave extension, 214th, 219th, and a handful of other intersection and capacity improvements that were not included in the comprehensive plan. So a lot of people have been interested in this 214th Street extension. It's not an easy extension to make by any means. Um, and so a little more information on it. We expect that about 800 trips will be um, taking 214th if it punches through, and that about 400 would go north and about 400 would go south. And so what that means is that just approximately, these numbers are <laughs> just approximations, it might be uh, on average in the peak hour, um, about 27 vehicles per minute, um, that would increase to 33 vehicles uh, per minute if 214th goes through in, by 2043. So one of the things, again, that we've heard from community members is that it's really important um, that 9th Ave be treated um, with uh, sidewalks the entire length and bicycle facilities, good quality bicycle facilities, and that that really needs to happen first before additional trips come into the area. So we're at the time where we can break into small group discussions. And the big thing we want to hear from you is what did we miss? How could we improve the draft plan? What actions are most important? Um, and we have three groups here. And this is also your chance to dig in a little deeper um, and talk more about um, what, the, what the proposals are in the plan. So the first group is the concept and urban design plan design group. Um, and then the land use, economic development, and natural environment group, and then the transportation group. And when you're in your small group, um, there is an online survey that you can follow along. And um, you can use it as a prompt or a guide today. And then if you'd like to dig in more and spend more time after the meeting, you can fill it out further later. Um, and Ian, if you would be able to post that link in the chat then folks can have that open. Hello, everyone. I think we are all back. So thanks for chatting with us. Um, hopefully it didn't feel too rushed and that we got to cover some questions and dig in at least a little bit. Um, I would like to do a little bit of a report out before we hear from Mike about next steps. And so I'll start with our group, which was the overall concept and urban design and a catch all for any, any other things about Canyon Park. Um, we heard a lot of support for um, walkable, mixed use, people oriented, community oriented, um, 24 hour kind of community. Um, and the character that comes with that or, and the kind of um, traditional communities or communities that existed before cars. Um, we did also hear some concerns or interest in, okay, with all this growth, who is this for? And do we have the services and specific resources that they need? So if it's seniors, do they have what they need living in this area or would they? Um, and then a lot of support for the transit orientation and the connection between transit and the land uses proposed and having that being a focus, uh, a focusing element for or the rationale behind the choices made sense to people. Um, and I think 
those were the main points from our group. If I could call on, who looks more ready, Lisa or Carmen? <laughs> Lisa, you're looking here. <laughs> I'll call on you. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Um, we focused on land use um, in our group, although it touched on what kind of investments you know to allow for economic development and that kind of thing. So there was general support for the ideas of putting more growth near transit and investments in transportation facilities and questions about had we looked at enough places where there might be higher density for jobs or people and we talked about sort of the range we looked at and 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 the potential balancing with transportation of impacts there was some question about there's a, a connector um, main street or a yellow line up on the hill um, and wondering if that is feasible and, and the source of that. And there was some questions around the north south extension behind Fred Meyer and had we looked at some other places. And so we talked through some of those. Also the, the mid block connections on the west side of Bothell Everett Highway um, on Juno and Phillips and how that might work if the area redevelops. So it was really an exploration of the land use plan, general agreement with the overall approach and just sort of fact finding some of the <laughs> urban design and con connectivity choices. Okay, Carmen from the transportation group. Great, uh, so in the transportation section, we talked about um, some of the timeline for the proposed projects in, um, in our, um, some of the ve vehicular projects. And we talked about how um, for these projects, while this is a 20 year plan, um, these items, including the city's comprehensive plan, will get updated periodically. So as things, as the economy changes, um, as needs change, the proposed projects can change. Um, and then there was also some discussion about um, the park and ride on the south side of I-405 and just how that can, how that's feasible and um, how that can improve transit access for more people in the sub area. Thank you. Is there anything else anyone wants to add on to what their group said just for one minute here? All right. Yeah, I, I have one comment or question. After the plan, I mean, what happens after the plan is adopted? Are there things that the city has to do relative to per, uh, land use permitting and zoning to make this a reality? Yeah, so I can start and Mike or Dave can add in, please. Um, but there will be a whole set of action items for the city to do. And one of those is to adopt new um, development regulations and design guidelines for the area. So that would be one is, um, and, and we're working on drafts of that right now. Um, so then putting that into place would be one of the first action items. Okay. Yeah, and just to add on to that, I think that's certainly one of the critical pieces is to make sure that we put the right zoning and then regulations in place to, to allow this to happen. Uh, one of the other things we're doing, I don't know that we touched on it much, is a planned action ordinance. Uh, and that is basically we're doing the environmental review for the future development of the sub area. It's uh, just what we did for downtown, so that a project that comes in that's consistent with the plan doesn't have to go through their own environmental review process. Uh, we just make sure that they're consistent and they're, then they can go ahead with the rest of the approval process. So, and that's an important incentive uh, for development in a particular area. And then as far as the, some of the transportation projects on that side, I'll let Steve talk a little bit more to that, but again, that's, some more as that is really long-term uh, and it also requires cooperation with other agencies to make a lot of those things happen. So, Steve. <laughs> While Steve's getting online, I'm just going to share my screen. I know it pops the screen around, so giving you some warning. So, um, like we talked a little bit in our breakout group for transportation, um, understanding what projects or transportation projects are necessary to support the land use is important. And it also helps us set up for going after funding. City has multiple sources of funding that it relies upon 
One are transportation impact fees that are that come out of new development. Um, the other source is large source are grant funding. Um, federal grants are very important to us, state grants as well. So this would allow us to have a plan that allows us to support that and compete for transportation dollars. I think one of the other steps that we probably didn't touch upon as much was um, TDM, Transportation Demand Management, and that's very important to us. And although it's not tied to projects, it is very important for us in order to reduce the amount of trips that actually take place. So we think as a city, we have to have some a good commitment to fund the coordinator or somebody to work with transit, uh, private businesses, and the city itself to try to get people out of their cars and using other modes of transportation. Thanks, Steve. So Mike, I, um, if it's all right, I think we can go on to the next steps. And I'll remember to unmute myself for a change. So if you're like me, uh, you'll think of something about 10 minutes after this is over, but not to worry, there's still plenty of time to comment. Uh, there's an online survey that I think Rachel talked about at the beginning. Uh, it's available on the city's website. There's a link there on the project website. And uh, please take some time to fill that out. Uh, you saw a little bit of it today. Encourage your friends as well to fill it out. Uh, the commission is still reviewing this and still taking public comment. The, the public hearing is continuing through at least the next two meetings in September. And you can email those to me or to the Canyon Park at boffawa.gov. Uh, again, that's all on the, <clears throat> excuse me, the project website. So uh, that's, that's going to be, I think, one of the, the best ways to provide some feedback overall. And then if you have particular comments, we really would like you to send those in either regular mail or email uh, or testify at one of the upcoming public hearings. So we'll provide all of your comments to the Planning Commission and then to the City Council when the Council considers the Commission's recommendation. Right now, we think that's probably going to occur in October. So I want to give uh, a thanks to our consultant team for putting on this virtual open house. This is the first one I've ever participated in. Uh, the technology seemed to, to work for us uh, pretty well today. So that was a good thing. Um, and also a, a special shout out to Ian and Rachel for the technological wizardry of making Zoom do all these neat things that we needed it to do. So I also want to thank all the participants for your time and your comments and your input today. This has been very helpful and I hope you will uh, continue to provide that input and follow the process. We talked about the code work that's going to come to the Planning Commission in September. So if you want to provide comments on that as well, uh, we certainly want to hear from you. So uh, do stay in touch. Uh, let us know what you're thinking about this and uh, 